Is it better to block or is it better to fuck? Let's find out. There are basically two kinds of brushless motor commutation. In other words, there's two different ways, primary ways to run one of these guys. And that is either trapezoidal commutation or field oriented control. Now I'm not going to go into the specific details. In fact, there are truly actually four methods, but you know, for all practical purposes and the stuff that we're interested in, there's really only two. In fact, I'm going to link a excellent video put out by Texas Instruments that explains the differences really, really well and better than I could. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel, right? So the point of today's video is to test block commutation or trapezoidal commutation versus field oriented control. They both have their pros and cons. You know, trapezoidal control is easier on the controller. It's better for high RPM running. But the downside of it is that you know, it's not, it doesn't apply torque at low speed evenly. It like goes click, click, click. There's, it's, it's not an even application of torque. Whereas with field oriented control, there is an even application of torque because basically the controller is calculating vectors between phases. It's, it's, it's better explained in that video that I linked earlier. But field oriented control is the most efficient, but it does require a lot of computational power while the motor's running. That does limit the maximum effective duty cycle to about 95%. So the question is, are those inefficiencies overcome by their efficiencies? Well, there's only one way to find out and that's to test it. Before we get started, I did get a comment about running this thing wide open like this is not putting any load on it. I've covered this in a bunch of other videos, but running it wide open like this is putting the most high speed load on it you possibly can. It's shoving the compressor straight into the choke region of the map where the drive power required shoots up astronomically, and this thing has to move a larger mass of air. So this is actually the most loaded. Now, again, it's covered in a bunch of other videos, so you know hopefully that answers the question. If you don't believe me, you can use one of those kilowatt meters, take a vacuum cleaner like a shop vac or something, plug it into the kilowatt meter and listen to it, cover up the hose with your hand, and you will see the power go down and you'll hear the vacuum speed up. Why? Because it's less loaded. It's a very similar concept. Not identical, but close enough. So this whole setup here has been, well, it's left over from the last video, and I figured we'd take advantage of this setup and do this test right now. So it's still set up for block commutation or trapezoidal commutation. I actually tried to do a motor detection. It failed. I tried all kinds of stuff. It just failed. Welcome to VESC, the instability that is this thing but it seems to be running okay. So let's go ahead and do some basic tests. The first test that we wanna see is, I'm gonna turn on the real-time data just in case something interesting happens. And the first thing we wanna see is slow speed running. So let's see how we can get this thing spinning, how easy it is. That's not bad, actually. Of course, it's inconsistent. I'm not touching the throttle now, but it's not bad, it's smooth. It makes some noise, and that's the thing about block computation, it makes noise. But, let's slow it down, stop it again. Let's go ahead and try one more time. This actually isn't working too bad at low speed. So now the real test is, because what we're interested in is maximum speed, Let's see how fast she'll go. That was cooking. Let's take a look at our RPM. And we're right around 90,000 ERPM or about 45,000 impeller RPM. Pretty much where our last video showed that we were. Now I'm going to switch everything over to field oriented control and we're going to run the same test and see what happens. Okay, so now we're set up in field oriented control and this time the whole wizard identification thing worked out just fine. So let's start a real time data on the VESC and let's see how she does at low speed. All right, nice and slow speed, let's see. Well, 
Well, on one hand, it's quieter. On the other hand, it's surging. Again, welcome to the VESC. The thing about the VESC is that this is software controlled. This is software based field oriented control. So there are actual hardware solutions. There are actual chips that do field oriented control. But as far as I know, they're not really that commonly available. So, you know, this is software that clearly needs some more development, honestly, because, you know, I've set these motors up now numerous times and I have yet to have one work flawlessly in this application. But again, we're going to try to spin it up. My hand is off the throttle. Throttle's over here. It's, it's all over the map. Yes, it's quieter, but if you were trying to, I don't know, ride an electric skateboard, which is what this thing was designed for, that would kind of suck. But what we're really interested in is how is this going to perform as far as maximum speed is concerned. Let's find that out. Ah. Well, that answers the question. 85,000, right? Almost exactly. So, you know, whereas before we had 90,000, here's 85,000. Considering there's about a 5% duty cycle difference at maximum available duty cycle, field oriented control is limited to 95. Trapezoidal control is limited to 100. Well, actually, I think it works out to be 99, but close enough. That's pretty much exactly what we saw. Just for grins, just to make sure there's no, you know, the battery's not depleted or something, even though I know it's not. Let's switch it back to trapezoidal control and see if we get back to 90,000. Well, there's your ABA comparison. That is pretty definitive. And also the low speed running is actually better with trapezoidal commutation as well as the startup even. The startup is better. None of those things should be better, but yet they all are. And that kind of shows you once again that the VESC is not really truly ready for prime time. It still needs more development work, which hopefully will happen. I mean, I, I want to love this thing. It does great things as far as data and analysis are concerned, but in practical use, it's not so useful. You're better off with a, another ESC, basically. So thanks so much for watching. Please comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that happy jazz. There's a lot more electric turbo stuff coming up and it's going to be really, really cool stuff. I'll catch you all in the next one.